Now, look here. I want to go over this script that Warner Brothers sent me. So excuse me a minute. Hmm, it's a Western. Good title, too. Bad Man of Bullock's Basement. <laughs> Scene one. Fade in on Ranch House. As the moon comes up in the east, the sagebrush casts weird shadows across black buzzard gulch. Before you get too interested in that script, wouldn't you like to hear the song I prepared for the program? Oh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Right, sing it. I can listen to you and read it at the same time. Well, it's about time. Hey, what's that you're reading, boy? It's a script from Warner Brothers, and it looks great. Gee, if I'd have made this picture last year, I would have won the Academy Award instead of Ronald Coleman. If you'd have made it in that dust cap and apron, you'd have won it instead of Loretta Young. <laughs> never mind. You know, boss, I wish you would win an Academy Award sometime. I've never seen an Oscar. You haven't? Well, Rochester, your wish may come true, because if I make this picture, I'm a cinch to win it. And maybe if you had someone with you in a supporting role, it might help. Well, a good supporting actor does add something. Uh, who did you have in mind, Dennis? Ronald Coleman. <laughs> Ronald in my picture? Yeah, that's a pretty good idea. I mean, now that he won the award, he certainly is worthy of the opportunity. <laughs> you know, I may go next door and speak to Mr. Coleman about it. I wonder if he's home. Where are you, Ronnie? In the library, Benita. <laughs> you know, maybe I haven't told you this before, but it's very nice being here, alone together, away from the crowd. Ronnie, stop talking to that Oscar and pay some attention to me. <laughs> I'm sorry, dear. Ah, but you were thrilled winning it, weren't you? Well, you know, it's hard to describe exactly how it feels. There I sat in the Shrine Auditorium, one person among an audience of 6,200 people, and then they called my name. As I walked to the stage, my entire career flashed before my eyes. From the time I made my first appearance in London many years ago, it's a banjo player. Well, I didn't know you ever played the banjo. Oh, yes, yes. I plunked a mean plink. <laughs> I used to be billed as the London Eddie Peabody. <laughs> and then I packed my belongings, took my banjo along, and came to America. Here I was billed as England's answer to Frank Remley. <laughs> things I kept thinking of during the Academy ceremonies, and I've no actual recollection of them presenting me with the Oscar. Well, you certainly were the most excited person on the stage. I excited? Was it noticeable? Oh, very. Especially when you went over to congratulate the other award winners. Well, what did I do? You slapped Loretta Young on the back and kissed Daryl Zanuck. <laughs> no. Yes. And you greeted everyone. You even shook hands with Jack Benny. <laughs> Well, I didn't mean to. He stuck his arm through Gregory Peck's sleeve. <laughs> anyway, darling, I wish we could have just one evening at home without mentioning Jack Benny. Oh, darling, why do you dislike him so? He means well, and he does try to be helpful. Why, only this morning he was walking around our yard helping our gardener. He wasn't helping. He was looking for Easter eggs. <laughs> Wearing that bunny suit, yes. <laughs> I aimed a kick and just missed his cottontail. <laughs> uh, why we moved next door to him, I'll never know. Ah, uh, but we have such a beautiful home. Yes, but other people have beautiful homes, too. But they can look out of their windows and see rolling green hills. Or the lights of the city spread out like a carpet of jewels. Or the golden sun setting on the Pacific. I look out of my window and see Jack Benny luxing his undies. Well, the ones you saw yesterday were yours. Oh. Yes. Yes, well, he did them rather well. Yeah, but why doesn't he stick to the laundry business instead of going on the radio? 
surrounding himself with all those characters. Oh, darling. Mary Livingston's such a nice girl. Oh, I don't mean Mary. I'm talking about the others. Take that Phil Harris fellow. <laughs> now, the way he conducted himself at the party after the Academy Awards. Oh, I didn't see him there. Well, very few people did. As soon as he arrived, he got a bottle, went off in a corner, and just sat there. <laughs> Wasn't he lonely? Lonely, but loaded. <laughs> you know, sometimes I say... Oh, Benita, look. Look out this window. Isn't that Phil Harris now? Where? He's walking towards Benny's house. Oh, yes, this is strange. I thought he was younger than that. He's carrying a cane. No, 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 no darling. Now, that's a pool cue. <laughs> well, just look at the way he swaggers when he walks. Phil, the point I'm trying to make is that you're content to go along day after day in the same old rut. But not me. I'm progressing. In fact, right now, I'm thinking of making a picture with Ronald Coleman. So, if you I You in a picture with Ronald Coleman? Ha, ha, ha. You better chalk up and shoot again, Dad. <laughs> what? And keep one foot on the floor. <laughs> well, I'm serious. What's so surprising about me and Ronald Coleman being in the same picture? Yeah, what's so surprising about it? After all, Mr. Benny was the star of Random Harvest. What? He has it embroidered on his underwear. <laughs> Dennis, those aren't mine. <laughs> anyway, Phil, whether you believe it or not, I'm going over to Ronald Coleman's right now and see if... Come in! Oh, hello, Don. Hello, Jack. Hi, fellas. Hello, hello Don. Say, Jack, I just dropped in for a minute. I want you to hear the number your sportsman quartet has prepared. Don, can't we do it tomorrow? i got to run next door to see Ronald Coleman. He and I are going to make a picture together. I don't think that last sentence got through the fat in my head. <laughs> Would you mind repeating it? Not at all. I said, Ronald Coleman and I are going to make a picture. No. <laughs> I can't get over all you guys. What's so amazing about me and Coleman being in a picture together? Show him your knees. Then... <laughs> you stay out of it. Now, Don, I haven't got time to listen to the quartet. I'll see you tomorrow. But, Jack, this number's so novel, I think you ought to hear it. It's a Western. Don, I don't care if it... A Western? Say, maybe that would fit in my picture. All right, Don, let's hear the number. Go ahead. How could you take up my valuable time with a thing like that? But, Jack, Please, it was... I don't want to get mad. Now, look, I got some business talk over with Mr. Coleman. I want to be in a good mood. That Indian stuff. I'm going to oversee him right now. Now, where's my picture script? Oh, here it is. Oh, good evening, Sherwood. Oh, good evening, Mr. Benny. Is Mr. Coleman at home? Yes, come in. Uh, may I take your hat, sir? There you are. Uh, your coat? Thank you. Your apron? What? <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, my goodness, I forgot to take it off. Uh, would you tell Mr. Coleman that I'm here? Uh, very well. Oh, Mr. Coleman. Yes, Sherwood? Uh, forgive me, sir, but Cottontail Benny is here. <laughs> No, no. Send him away. Tell him we're not at home. Well, wait a minute, darling. Maybe Jack's just trying to be neighborly. He, he probably wants to congratulate you on winning the Academy Award. Well. Yes, show Mr. Benny in, Sherwood. Uh, yes, ma'am. I, I was rather sporting of him. After all, he must have been a bit hurt when we didn't go over and congratulate him on being the walking man. You know, for eight long weeks, he just walked around in a circle. <laughs> yeah, too bad he didn't straighten it out. He'd be in Chicago by now. <laughs> Anyway, I, I still feel that this is a trick. He's over here to borrow something. Oh, why do you always suspect that, Ronnie? Well, he already has my electric shaver, portable radio, phonograph, bridge lamp, cocktail shaker, electric blanket, fountain pen, tuxedo, and Wednesday night was the last straw. Why? What happened? He told me he was going to the Palladium, his girlfriend had to work, and he wanted to borrow you. <laughs> <laughs> why didn't you tell me? I haven't done the shimmy in years. <laughs> Now, Benita. Here he comes. Hello, Benita. Hiya, Ronnie. Long time no see. Hello. Hello, Jack. You're right, Jack. I haven't seen you since the dinner party last Saturday night. Yes. Well, that a wonderful dinner. Too bad you couldn't have been at my table. Oh, that's all right, Jack. The man we had served beautifully. <laughs> By the way, Ronnie, I didn't get a chance to talk to you Saturday night, so I just came over to congratulate you on winning the Academy Award. Thank you, Jack. Good night. Huh? <laughs> oh, well, he, 
Maybe he just meant it was a good night uh, to have won the award. Oh, 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 oh I see. <laughs> well, Ronnie, the real reason I came over here is to offer you a part in a movie that I'm going to make for Warner Brothers. You're making a movie, and you have a part for me? That's right, and it's something you've never done before. I'm sure. <laughs> You know, it, it's a Western. It's a Western, Ronnie, and you'll play a cowboy. Me? A cowboy? Yeah, I, I brought along the script so you could read a few lines, just to see how you like it. Uh, look, Jack, I have no intention Ronnie, of... Ronnie, why don't you read it? It might be a grand opportunity. Oh, well, all right. Good. Now, Benita, will you do me a favor and read the feminine lead with oh, Ronnie? Oh, so wait a minute, Jack. I mean, I don't uh, now, want Now, now, Benita, anything. why don't you read it? It may be a grand opportunity. <laughs> all right, I will. Good. Now, start reading on page three, where you two meet for the first time. Now, go ahead, Ronnie. Remember, you're a cowboy. Shucks, ma'am, I sure am plumb sorry I killed that hombre. I reckon I didn't reckon he was your paw. I reckon. Well, you sure plugged poor paw. But even though he's gone, I reckon he'll be happy to know you're apologizing for an honest mistake. Uh, I reckon. Uh, a little more feeling, Benita, then. <laughs> Shucks, Missy, ma'am. I sure feel like an ordinary coyote for a shooting your kinfolk. Uh, uh, bow your legs a little there, will you? <laughs> yeah, poor sure look. Trains lying there in the tumbleweed. <laughs> Cold and dead. Now, now, this is your big speech, Ronnie, so be very, very tender to this. Yeah. Wait a minute, little lady. Don't say dead. A cowboy is never dead. Just say he's traveled onward. Up to that big corral up yonder in the sky. Where all you can hear is the harps of the angels. And the singing of the sons of the pioneers. <laughs> Heavens, what was that? Me, I'm playing the part of your horse. <laughs> oh, good. The scene where you break your leg and I have to shoot you? <laughs> I'm sorry, Jack, but this part isn't for me. Well, okay, Ronnie. I was just trying to do you a favor, you know. It's your career. But when the picture comes out and it's a big hit, remember, I offered you the part before I took it to Gabby Hayes. <laughs> That's your decision. I'll be running along. Good night, Ronnie. Good night, Benita. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks for uh, nice of you to think of me. Well, I always like to help. Hey, wait a minute. Ronnie, is that your Oscar on the table with the floodlights on it? <laughs> yes. Say, do you mind if I look at it? Well, uh... gosh, it's really beautiful. You know, Rochester, my butler, has never seen an Oscar. Would it be all right if I borrowed it for a little while? <laughs> well, uh... oh, all right, Jack. Go ahead and take it. Gee. Thanks. Darling, why did you agree to let him take the Oscar home? It might as well be with the rest of my things. <laughs> what did you say? Oh, nothing, nothing. Oh. Well, Ronnie, it's awfully nice of you. Thanks a lot. I'll just wrap the Oscar in this copy of tonight's newspaper. I haven't read it yet. <laughs> there we are. Well, good night. Good, good night. night. He was nice of him to let me take the Oscar so I could show it to Rochester. I must have stayed there longer than I thought. So dark out. No moon. Oh, well. Hello, kitty. Hey, kitty, 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 kitty. Darn it, she got away. She'd have made a wonderful A string. Hey, Bud. Bud. Huh? Got a match? Match? Yes, I have one right here. Don't make a move. This is a stick up. What? You heard me. Mister. Mister, put down that gun. Shut up. Now, come on. Your money or your life? <laughs> Look, bud. 
I said your money or your life. I'm thinking it over. <laughs> Now, mister, shut up and give me a wallet, and I'll take that package you're holding, too. No, no, mister, don't take that package. It isn't mine. It belongs to Ronald Coleman. Shut up. But, mister, please. Hey, please. this looks like gold. I'll melt it down. But it isn't mine. I have to return it. Pipe down. And lay down on the sidewalk, face down, and count to a hundred. Look, mister, can't we... Go on. Don't make a move or I'll let you have it. Okay. Okay. Down on your face and start counting. Yes, sir. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Yeah. Go away, Kitty. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah. Kitty, stop licking my face. I got enough trouble. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Yeah. Kitty, go away from here. Nineteen, twenty. What will I tell Ronnie? Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. <laughs> Say, Mary, Mary, I happen to look out the window and there's an express trunk out in front of the Coleman. I wonder what's going on. Well, Jack, didn't you know Ronnie and Benita are leaving for England tomorrow? Gee, I didn't know that. So they're going to England, eh? Yes, and this will be your last chance to go over there and explain to Ronnie what happened to his Oscar. You're right, Mary. But, gee, I just haven't the courage to face him. Maybe if I... Get that, will you, Mary? Okay. Phil's going to be a little late, kid, so as soon as Don comes, we'll start the rehearsal. Look, Jack, before we start, don't you think you ought to go over to Ronald Coleman's house and apologize to him for losing his Oscar? Well, that can wait till next week. But he's leaving for England tomorrow. I can't help it. This whole thing was Coleman's fault. Coleman's fault? Certainly. This never would have happened if he hadn't won the Oscar in the first place. <laughs> Believe me. Mr. Benny's right. Certainly. Mr. Coleman should be smart and make pictures like the horn blows at midnight. <laughs> Darn tootin'. Anyway, Mary, it wasn't my fault that the Oscar was stolen from me. I know, Jack, but the least you can do is go over and explain the whole thing to him. Well, okay, I'll go over to the Coleman's after rehearsal. Gee, I hope he's not too angry. Are you all finished packing, Ronnie? I will be in just a minute, Benita. Darling, I'm really thrilled about our trip. Yes. Ah, to be in England now that James Mason's over here. <laughs> oh. oh, Ronnie. <laughs> now, go on, hurry and finish your packing. Well, it won't take long. I hope we have a nice crossing. How's the weather on the North Atlantic this time of year? It's rather cold and windy. Oh, well, I'd better take a pair of the long ones. <laughs> uh, say, Benita, did you call the newspaper office and tell them to forward our copies to London? Oh, no, that'd be silly. They have all the news in the English papers. Well, they don't have little often any. Yes, they do. <laughs> Only they call her their parent list Penelope. Oh, good, good. <laughs> say, isn't it a shame you haven't got the Oscar to take to England with you? Oh, darling, please. My doctor told me not to discuss that. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, don't give up hope yet. Why don't you go over and speak to Jack Benny? I mean, the Oscar must be around someplace. Things don't just disappear. Oh, oh, they don't, eh? Nine years ago, a gas man went into Benny's house and hasn't been seen since. <laughs> now, let's, let's forget it. All right. I'll help you finish packing. Let's see, you'll want to take these shirts. Oh, 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 Benita, careful. I I'll pack those shirts myself. That's quite all right. I don't mind helping. Here, let me put them in. Um, I... Ronnie! Ronnie! Look what fell from between these shirts! Your Oscar! Yes. Yes, so it is. Well, <laughs> you certainly don't seem very surprised at finding it. Uh, Benita, let's finish the packing. Hmm? There's something very peculiar going on. When did you get your Oscar back? Uh, well, we'll discuss it on the boat, darling. We'll discuss it now. Tell me everything. All right, but I, I don't know all the details myself. I'll have our chauffeur tell you. Oh, Eddie. Eddie, will you please come in here a moment? Ronnie, you've had the Oscar right in this house, and you let Jack Benny suffer all these weeks? Yes. 
<laughs> Life can be beautiful. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm sorry you, you discovered it so soon. I could have made Benny... You, uh, <clears throat> you wanted to see me, Mr. Coleman? Oh, yes, Eddie, yes. Uh, Mrs. Coleman has discovered our little secret, and I want you to tell her the whole story about the Oscar. Oh, that. Uh, well, you see, ma'am, Mr. Coleman was pretty fed up with Jack Benny's constant borrowing. So the night he borrowed the Oscar, Mr. Coleman tipped me off and told me what to do. While I went out in front of the house, I was hiding behind a tree. And when Mr. Benny came out of your house and walked down the side... Hey, bud. Bud. Huh? You got a match? Yes, yes, I have one right Don't here. Don't make a move. This is a stick-up. Mister, put down that gun. Shut up. I said this is a stick-up. Now, come on. Your money or your life? <laughs> Look, bud. I said your money or your life. I'm thinking it over. <laughs> now, look. Look, mister. And I'll take that package you're carrying, too. This package? But it isn't mine. It belongs to Ronald Coleman. He won Lay down and give it to me or I'll drill you. All right. All right. Here it is. Now, lay down the sidewalk and count to a hundred. Yes, sir. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. And that's exactly what happened, ma'am. And when I brought the Oscar right in the house and gave it to Mr. Coleman. Well, thank you, Eddie. You may go now. Yes, sir. Don't stare at me like that, darling. It was time Benny was taught a lesson, and I'm glad I did it. Ronnie, that was an awfully mean thing to do, and I love you for doing it. <laughs> well, I'm glad you see it my way. Uh, Benita, are you sure the express men picked up all the trunks? Yes. Now let's finish these valises and then we'll, um, uh... Uh, Answer the door, will you, darling? I'm trying to close this bag. All right. Oh! Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Benita. I heard you were going to England, so I brought you this as a going-away gift. Oh, what a beautiful bouquet of white roses. You really like them? Why, they're my favorite flower. In fact, I have a bush of them right over the... <laughs> They were there this morning. <laughs> well, I was afraid that while you were in England, they might wither and die, you see. <laughs> so I... Uh, who's at the door, Benita? It's Mr. Benny. He's come to say goodbye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> in, Jack. Ronnie's in the other room. Well, well, almost packed, I see. Yes, Jack, and tomorrow we'll be on our way. Ronnie, I thought on the boat, uh, you know, time might hang heavy on your hands, so I brought you this book. Here. Well, thank you, Jack. Nice of you to return it. <laughs> and, and that isn't all I brought, Ronnie. See, I've got something here for both you and Benita. A carton of Lucky Strike cigarettes. A carton of Lucky Strikes? And you'll love them. They're so round, ro round Ronnie, and so firm, <laughs> Benita, and so fully packed, Ronnie. They're so free and easy on the Oscar. On the draw. <laughs> I mean, on the draw. The draw. Yes, yes, I know, I know, Jack, I know. LSMFT stands for Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, yes, you must have heard that once. And quality of product, you know, is essential to continuing success. Here you are, Ronnie. Here are the cigarettes. Thank you, Jack. How much are they? A dollar? Oh, no. <laughs> No, no, Ranny. Mary told me not to. <laughs> By the way, Benita, I want to give you a little advice. What's that, Jack? Well, while you're in England, if anyone wants to sell you any cashmere, tweeds, or woolen, grab them because they're a good buy. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> no, no. Wait. Wait. <laughs> Look, I... I might as well, Ronnie, I might as well tell you the real reason I came over here. The real reason? Yes, Ronnie. I, uh, I know you won't believe this, but the night I borrowed your Oscar, I was held up. No. Cross my heart and hope my swimming pool loses money this summer. <laughs> and, Ronnie, after losing your Oscar, I was so embarrassed, I did everything I could to avoid you. I was afraid you'd see me. I practically lived in hiding. 
Every Sunday, I had to sneak out of my house down to NBC. Then after my broadcast, I'd sneak out of the studio. Well, didn't you always do that? <laughs> <laughs> Only on Sundays. <laughs> well, Jack, you know, it's funny you should be held up practically in front of our house. Oh, it was a harrowing experience. You'll never know what I went through to protect your Oscar. Would you like me to tell you about it? We'd, We'd love, love to hear it. it. Well, the night I borrowed your Oscar, I left your house and was walking down the sidewalk, humming in my usual carefree way. Hey, Bud, Bud. Huh? You got a match? Yes, I have one right here. Don't make a move. This is a stick-up. A stick-up? Put down that gun, or by heaven, I'll make you rue the day that you were born. <laughs> I say. <laughs> now, take it easy, mystery. You'll get hurt. I'm not alone. I have a ferocious lion here. A lion? That lion doesn't scare me. Quiet, you. I'll slap your teeth in. Take that. And now for you, tough guy. Please, mister, please don't hurt me. Hey, fellas, come here. Help! Why, you sniveling, white-livered, cringing coward. Take that. Hey, fellas. Fellas, he knocked me down. Come on, help me. Okay, chief. Here we come. This guy's a tough one. We'll have to use our last resort. Give it to him. <laughs> mm. It was a long time coming, but... Mm. <laughs> Rocket bombs stunned them a little. Come on, fellas. We better get out of here. That was the last thing I heard, Ronnie. When I came to, all 500 of them were gone. And so was your Oscar. But I really did my best to protect it. Ah, uh, start, fellow. I protected that Oscar with my life. That sounds pretty good, Johnny, but it ain't the way I heard it. <laughs> what? Look, Jack, I might as well tell you. You can stop worrying about the Oscar. It was returned to me. Who? How? When, what, how, how, who, who, who? All right now, Jack, don't ask any questions. The important thing is I got it back. Well, that's wonderful. Gee, I've never felt so happy in my life. Now, look, Ronnie, if you had to give a reward to get the Oscar back or ran into any other expense, don't worry. You're insured. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Come on, Ronnie, we've got to finish our packing. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Coleman. Do you want me to take the Felicia's out to the car? Uh, yes, Eddie, and be sure Ronnie, to see that the... Ronnie! Benita! Look, that's him! The man that helped me out! Ronnie! Jack jumped right through the window. <laughs> and look at him run! Gee, Mr. Coleman, I'm sorry I frightened him. He certainly left in a hurry. Yeah, he sure did. I'll take his shoes back to him in the morning. <laughs> Ronnie, Ronnie, ferocious lion. <laughs> <laughs> Rocket bomb. <laughs> 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 <laughs>